Okay, so we're going to talk about mathematical modeling. And the first thing we're going to cover is getting a linear regression equation of some data using your calculator. So I've already entered these numbers into my L1 and L2. And you notice that I'm letting the year 2000 equal 0 and the year 2002 equal 2 and so on and so on. These numbers are the population in millions in the United States through the year 2000 to 2007. So to get the linear e regression equation, I'm going to go to Stat, I'm going to go over to Edit, I'm going to go over to Calc, actually, and then hit number 4. OK, and it's going to ask me, do you want my X list to be L1? And yes, that's our time. Our Y list will be L2, that's our population. Don't worry about frequency list. And where do you want to put the regression equation? Well, why don't we put it in Y1? So I'm going to go to Alpha. F4 and hit Y1. And if we go to Y equals, it should have been there. Hang on just a minute. OK, here's the deal. I forgot to tell it to calculate it. So now when I go to Y equals, there it is. OK, and if you want to take a look at your um, the plot of your data, you can go to stat plot, which is up above Y equals turn that one on. So hit Enter. And then go to Zoom, arrow down to Zoom Stat, which is number 9. Hit Enter. And there's our data. And there's our line going through it. So it's a pretty nice uh, fit for our data, isn't it? Let me grab that. OK, so there it is. Now, once you get your mathematical model, here's how it's useful. Let's say I'd like to predict the population in 2011. So on my calculator, I'm going to go to my window and make sure that my x max is big enough to cover 2011. So why don't we go out to 15, hit Graph. OK, I'm going to have to increase my y also, aren't I? So let's increase our Y max to go to 400, say, graph. And so if I want to know what the population in 2011 is according to our model, I'll hit Trace, hit 11. Whoop. Go back to Trace. Well, it doesn't want to do that, does it? OK, so I go to Trace. And oh, I've got to get onto my hit the up arrow. So now I'm on my regression equation. Now I hit 11, enter, and there it is. It looks like it's about 313 million in the year 2011. All right, so now let's talk about a particular kind of mathematical modeling called variation. And direct variation means that y varies directly as x, which is the same thing as saying y is directly proportional to x, which is the same thing as saying that y equals some constant times x. And k is called the constant of variation, or sometimes called the constant of proportionality. So here's an example. Use the value of k equals 1 half to complete the table for the direct variation of the model y equals kx squared. So we would say y varies directly as x squared. Notice that I've put it into my y equals. And now I'm going to go to my table set. I'm going to start my table at 2. And you'll notice that each x is increasing by 2. So I'll make my delta table be 2. And now I will go to second table. And I can just read my numbers off. So that's going to be when x is 2 y is 2. When x is 4, y is 8. 6, 18, 8, 32, and 10, 50. So your table is a very useful feature when you're doing uh, tables of variation. OK, now inverse variation. Inverse variation means that instead of k times x, you've got y equals k divided by x. So varying inversely and Inversely proportional all mean the same thing. And when you have them all together, 
You can say z varies jointly as x and y, jointly proportional to x and y, and that's the same thing as saying z equals k times x and y. So if you have three things that are related to each other, it's going to be called joint variation. So let's do some examples here. If I want to write a varies directly as a square of r as a mathematical model, I would say a equals k r squared. v varies directly as the cube of e. v equals k e cubed. y varies inversely as a square of x. y equals k over x squared. h varies inversely as the square root of s. h equals k divided by the square root of s. f varies directly as g and inversely as r squared. f equals k times g and divided by r squared. And finally, z is jointly proportional to the square of x and the cube of y. So z equals k times x squared y cubed. So let's do some examples. The simple interest on an investment is directly proportional to the amount of the investment. So we'll say that the interest i is directly proportional to the amount, which we'll call p. And we know that we got an interest of 113.75 after one year of investing $3,250. So that means solving for k, I'm going to divide that 113.75 by 3250. Let's go over to our calculator and do that. 113.75 divided by 3250, and we get k is point zero point zero three five. So our model will be I equals zero point zero three five P. How about this? Find a mathematical model to describe Newton's law of universal gravitation. The gravitational attraction F between two objects of masses M1 and M2 is proportional to, that's the same thing as direct variation, is proportional to the product of the masses. So F is proportional to, that's K M1 times M2, their product, and inversely proportional to, so we're going to divide by the square of the distance R. That's it. That's Newton's law of universal gravitation. And finally, we've got a 28 gauge copper wire which has a diameter of 0 0.012 inches, and it has a resistance of 64.9 ohms per thousand feet. So watch out, we've got inches here and thousand feet there. So 0 0.012 inches is equal to 0 0.0005 feet. So let's go ahead and do that so we're all in the same units. What length of 28 gauge wire will, produ will produce a resistance of 33.5 ohms? Okay, well let's get our constant of proportionality first, because it says use the fact that the resistance of a wire, so we'll call that R, is directly proportional to its length, K, L, and inversely proportional to its area. So we know that when we have 64.9 ohms of resistance, that's going to go for a thousand feet of wire over the area, and the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, oh, I just made a mistake up here, didn't I? I got ahead of myself. If the diameter is 0 0.012 inches, then the radius is 0 0.006 inches. Okay, so back to our area here. So I've got pi times 0 0.0005 squared. Let's go ahead and calculate that. So I'm going to go second pi times point zero 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 five squared. Okay, that's going to be seven point eight five four times
times 10 to the negative 7. So solving for k, I'm going to go 64.9 times 7.854 times 10 to the negative 7 divided by 1,000. And let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go times 64.9 divided by 1,000. So I've got 5.097 times 10 to the negative 8 equals k. OK. So now we're ready to write our model. The resistance of a wire is equal to KL over A. So R is equal to 5.097 times 10 to the negative 8 L over our area, which is 7.854 times 10 to the negative 7. We'd like to know what is L if R is 33.5. So solving this, I'm going to go 0.5 times the area divided by k. Let's get our calculator up here if we can. So I'm going to go 33.5 times 7.854, scientific notation, negative 7 divided by 5.097, scientific notation, negative 8, enter. And we get about 516 feet will give us a resistance of 33.5.